Okay, this is another example of a two-factor analysis of variance. And you can see on screen here the scenario. It's to do with mangrove crabs. And I've got an image down bottom right there of this particular type of crab. I'll say it comes in two color forms. The yellow form you can see here and also a red form and it's quite common in mid to upper tidal parts of mangroves in and around Darwin Harbour. The top image is showing propagules, that is the partly growing seedlings from mangroves and the mangrove crabs here you can see it's eating a leaf but they may also eat propagules so while I've been speaking you've been reading through the observation model hypothesis, null hypothesis and the test. And the test here involves having three treatments uncaged, caged and cage control treatments in three habitats. The habitats are low uh, on the shore, in the middle of the shore so in the main tidal flat area and in the hinterland or the area towards the back of the mangroves. Caged seedlings are cages made out of wire fencing mesh to keep crabs out. Uncaged is pretty obvious. Cage controls are cages with two sides removed so the crabs can actually go in. And I want to look at the analysis and also in particular the meaning of interaction. So to start with here are the calculations working through the two-factor ANOVA and in the table at the bottom I've got the means and the variances. Now the means here are percent survival um, and a certain number of seedlings were put into the cages can't actually remember, 10, 15 in each cage and we're looking at mean survival for three replicate cages and you'll note the variances can be quite hard, quite large. Um, where there's 0% survival there must be zero variance because nothing survived in any cage. But where we get have av uh, moderate survival, say about 30, 35, 40% then variances can be quite high. If we're doing the Cochrane's test, it's 0.487, the largest variance over the sum of the others, and the table value is 0.478. So if we're using Cochrane's test here to test whether the analysis can proceed, the Cochrane's test basically says no, the variances are not equal. When the data are percentages, an appropriate transform is the inverse sign and it's square root of the proportion. Now the data used here are percentages so I divide by 100 to get proportions and so it's inverse sign square root of the proportion. And when we look at the transform data the variance when the mean survival is zero is still zero because that can't possibly change. But the variance for um, intermediate survival has been reduced by the transformation. And you can see Cochrane's now is 0.475, less than 0.478. So the transformation has worked and we can proceed with the analysis. Uh, and this is just showing the Cochrane's table. So the um, K here is the number of treatments. That's nine because we've got three treatments in three habitats, so nine treatments in total. And degrees of freedom across the top here is two because there's three replicates. Take away one, two degrees of freedom, so 0.478. So if we're actually doing the calculations by hand we need to calculate th five S terms and they're up here. I'm not going to go through those in detail in this example but for example um, S2 
is the sum of the squares for all so basically it's every observation squared added up for all 27 observations now you can go to the SBI 209 statistical manual for more details on that here's the analysis of variance table we arrive at um, here I've got zone is the first factor treatment is the second then there's the interaction within error or residual sum of squares and total sum of squares total sum of squares and degrees of freedom are just checks on the calculations so if add up sum of squares for the first four terms here they'll add up to 5.06 meaning I've got the other calculations correct if I'm doing it by computer I don't really need to worry about that four degrees of freedom for zone three zones or three habitats take away one two degrees of freedom treatments is the same and then the interaction is zone DF times treatment DF or four degrees of freedom within or error is number of habitats or number of zones times number of treatments times number of replicates take away one so three times three times two or 18 add those all up and it's 26 DF in total or the total number of observations 27 take away one mean squares are sums of squares divided by degrees of freedom and then because all factors are fixed here we get the F calculated by mean square for the source divided by mean square within so 5.39 and 10.87 for the main effects the table value with 2 and 18 degrees of freedom is 3.55 so null hypothesis for zone and treatment are rejected all survival in all three habitats is not the same survival in all three treatments is not the same the interaction F calc is smaller 3 but it's still greater than the table value 2.93 the table value is different here because it's 4 and 18 not 2 and 18 so all three null hypotheses are rejected and in particular the interaction null hypothesis is rejected and the interaction null hypothesis being rejected says something complicated is going on so let's have a look here's a graph and the graph here is in terms of mean survival um, in terms of transformed values because that's what the analysis is on and I tended to be a bit inconsistent in my terminology here RS the blue is the low shore zone so that's the rhizophorus dilosa zone or area right next to the creek green CA Ceriops australis is the midshore region the main tidal flat and then the brown LR is Lumnitsa racemosa which is the hinterland the area along the back of the mangroves and you can see here why there's an interaction and there's actually two reasons for the interaction here first of all if we look at the green and brown zones so the middle and back zones survival is high in the cage treatments but non-existent in the uncaged and cage control treatments so when we keep the crabs out the mangrove seedlings can survive if the crabs get in they eat them all and there's no survival there is however a difference between the Cereops and the hinterland survival is highest overall in the Cereops or mid tidal area in cage treatments so those conditions there are physiologically good for the mangrove seedlings if the crabs are kept out if the crabs are kept out in the hinterland the seedlings can survive but physiologically that environment is not ideal so there's lower survival 
than in the cereops or mid-tidal area. In the low shore zone, this, the rhizophora zone, it's rather a different picture. Cage treatment has no effect at all and the main reason is those big crabs that eat the seedlings don't live down on that part of the shore. So it doesn't matter whether we cage the seedlings or not. But overall survival there is similar to survival in the hinterland. Other reasons, other physiological reasons apparently are causing survival to be lower in that low shore zone than in the cereops zone and we haven't looked at that any further so I'm not going to speculate. It could be to do with things like the sediment down there being less stable so the seedlings tend to get washed around and washed over and washed away. Maybe they're, um, they're under the water for too long there could be a range of reasons. But there's really two sorts of complicating things going on here in the middle tidal area where the cereops are and in the hinterland where the lomnitra are. Uncaged areas and cage control areas where crabs can get in, where these large crabs can get in, they basically obliterate the seedlings. In the low shore zone where these crabs don't occur, cage treatment has no effect but survival is reduced below the mid-shore region for some physiological reasons which we don't really know about at the moment. Over here the next graphic is just showing getting the table values for the F table so 18 degrees of freedom for the within and 2 or 4 for the main effect 2 degrees of freedom and 4 for the interaction. So this is a nice example of a two-factor design showing the complications that can occur with the interpretation of the results when there is a significant interaction.